Hello everybody, welcome to Poverty Hill Adventures. In today's video, we've got a great one for everybody. We've got uh, a video about a Adirondack trap line adventure that our friend Dino here uh, just got back from. I know you're all going to enjoy it. How are you doing everybody? My name is Dino. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, my annual... Uh, trapping excursion up into uh, the northern part of the Adirondacks. Uh, I started started doing this trip with my son when he was about five years old. That's probably about 15 years ago. And uh, it's been a tradition, although the last uh, several years with my son in college now, it makes it a little bit tricky for him to go out with me. So um, I've changed things up a little bit. And over the past several years, I've been setting up a Adirondack uh, primitive camp and basically trapping and hunting out of the camp. Each year, I, I like to set different goals or challenges for my trip. Um, this year, like last year, my goal was to not catch a ton of critters. Um, I wanted to try to get a variety of animals. I know what kind of animals are up there. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But my goal was to try to get a lot of different types of animals. Um, I wanted to spend some time in the woods doing a little bit of hunting with my flintlock. Um, I also wanted to try to challenge myself um, with the cooking that I did and try to eat a lot of the animals that I caught. I brought up a lot of stuff that I'll talk about in a little bit uh, from the garden. So uh, basically, main goal is to be safe, but I wanted to set out quality sets for my traps. I didn't want to get a ton of critters and uh, just have a lot of fun and take my time um, putting the animals up. And I like to use all the parts of the animal, um, everything from their claws to their teeth to their tails. And um, you know, again, for me, I was very successful that I was able to do that on this trip. The area that I've been uh, trapping and actually camping in over the past several years um, is located um, kind of on the fringe of the Adirondacks. Technically, it's a little bit north of the Adirondacks, but some of the trapping I do is on, on the Adirondacks. But the place I go, I have permission uh, to be on at several hundred acres. Um, no one else can get in, so I feel comfortable leaving all of my gear there. Um, the area basically has several ponds and a lot of swales that connect them. So for me, that's perfect habitat for all the muskrats and the otter and the beaver. Um, in between there, there's a lot of old fields, um, a couple nice hilly areas, a lot of cedar trees and some birch trees, which is absolutely beautiful to look at, especially seeing we got a little bit of snow out there. Um, very pretty, but um, the critters that like that type of habitat are the bobcat and the fisher. So I get to target those uh, those species as well. And then in between with the open fields, I get a lot of canines, a lot of uh, gray fox, red fox, and coyotes that do a lot of their mousing and rabbit hunting in that area. So very nice uh, habitat, wide variety of critters, lots of animals to see and lots of animals to try to catch. So for me, a lot of the fun is the planning of the trip. I have so much fun planning as, as much as I do uh, actually being on the trip. So every year I think about things that I could do bigger and better. Um, so each trip becomes a little bit more fun. I'm making sure that I have all the pieces and parts that I need. Um, last year I had a great trip. Um, I planned that I wanted to have a table. I made a table for this past trip which worked out really nice, a folding table. Um, I picked up some a real nice wooden chair that was nice to have in camp. Um, I keep track of everything in my notebook so that way I can go back and reflect on what works and what doesn't. Um, and again, I think back to the way this trip worked out, I, I was really fully prepared, um, and I don't think I'd really do anything different, um, than I did before. Maybe you try to bring a little bit less stuff. You always get stuck in that groove where you want to make sure you have extra stuff on top of the extra stuff, but I end up, uh, not needing it. So next year I'm going to try to slim that down and, and go from there. So as I mentioned before, I really enjoyed planning for these trips, putting all the pieces and parts together. Um, so much that uh, I actually have to do a couple dry runs packing up my Jeep because I have so much stuff and it's such a limited supply. Um, the gear that the main gear that I have out there is my wall tent. It's probably about a 12 foot long wall tent with a with a um, a dining fly that sticks out the end of that, which is about another 15 foot. So it's extremely challenging for one person to set up those uh, beams going across the ridge poles. So what I did before I came up on this trip is I basically, I set it up a couple times in my backyard, um, tried different techniques to get those poles up so I could get the pins through. Again, it, it's very, very, very challenging. But um, anyway, that was really important, so I figured that out. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the other gear I like to bring are the, uh, obviously, all my trapping gear, 
I try to crunch all that down and try to simplify things. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, cooking, I love to cook, so I want to make sure I have a couple things for cooking. My, my cast iron, I love my cast iron. A couple pots to boil in and some silverware. Um, and then clothing. When I'm up on this trip in, in November, the weather could be sunny and the weather could be snowy like it was last time. So I really don't know how the weather's going to change over the course of two, three weeks. So I do have to prepare and, and bring a lot of gear with me. I always wear my wool. That's number one. Um, and I like to bring my primitive gear. I do a lot of flint hunt, flintlock hunting up there. So I'll get dressed up in my mid-1700 attire. Um, I enjoy going out on the trap line with my... Uh, with my gear as well. So it's a lot of prep work. It's a lot of preparation to get it packed into the Jeep. And um, it's actually a lot of work to get it packed back in the Jeep when I'm breaking camp. But again, I'll mention that a little bit later. Um, real quickly, um, I have probably about 50 stakes and I just counted these ropes as I was putting them away to set up the tent. I have 54 ropes to go on to this tent. So it is quite an ordeal to get the, the wall tent set up as well as a couple auxiliary tents I set up to do my fur processing in and to uh, um, yeah do all my skinning etc. So a lot of fun, a lot of prep. So regarding the gear, this is probably my most important tool. I can put my stakes in with this for the tent, obviously split up my wood. I really like to have this axe and this axe means a lot to me. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, again my stove is, is instrumental. I like to have a couple uh, cast iron skillets. I don't need to get crazy with tons of them. Um, I like to have my uh, my cooking knife that I use to prepare my food, which is different than the knife that I use to put up my critters. I like to try to keep that a little bit clean. Um, what else do I have? My bedding. Um, I use all wool. I like to try to uh, keep it as primitive as I can. So that's very important. I found over the past couple years, I have several really heavy uh, wool blankets that I kind of narrowed it down to just needing one wool blanket. Um, it's big enough I can fold it over and it works out really great in camp. Uh, the other thing that's super important, again, is my table. I mentioned before that I, I made this before, uh, before I went. It folds up so it's nice and compact. Um, <clears throat> I bring a chair. It's very nice to be able to sit down with, uh, with some back support after a long day out there at, at camp. Um, I do have a, a liner for the bottom of my tent, which is really nice so I can take off my muddy boots. Um, put on my slippers and it's a little bit more comfortable. The other thing that I did at the camp, which I've been doing for the past several years, is behind my stove I build a drying rack. Um, I get so soaking wet, whether it's from the sweat from running around or from the rain or the snow. So it's really nice to be able to hang all my gear, dry it off, and have it ready, ready to go in the morning. Um, so again, real basic. I bring a couple candles and um, every year I try to bring less and less. I want to be comfortable so if I can bring it, I'll bring it, but I do try to trim it down and, and just use the bare necessities. So I, uh, I arrived safe and sound up at my camping area. Um, I had probably about three hours before it got dark. Um, again, I had a plan all in my head where I was gonna set up my tent. Um, I unloaded my Jeep, laid everything out so I know exactly what I have, where it is, and started the, uh, the long process and fun process of setting up camp. So I did get camp set up just in the nick of time, just before it got dark. Um, the next day, um, my plan was to go into town to get some supplies. Well, as it happens, I woke up in the morning. It was a beautiful morning. I got antsy to set, uh, set some traps. Um, I have multiple places I set traps where I actually have to drive to off the site that I camp at. But um, I made my rounds. I got probably about oh a dozen and a half sets out um, late morning. Went back into my Jeep, and the Jeep was dead. Uh, I had to, I uh, figured it was a battery issue, hike in about a mile out of woods, out of the woods to get a battery pack. Jeep started up, unhooked the terminal, unhooked the, uh, the clipper there, and it died. So make a long story short, I had to have it towed out of the woods and then towed from the road to the dealership to try to get it fixed. Um, it was late Friday night by the time I got it to the mechanic. Um, and they determined, make a long story short, that my Jeep computer was fried and <clears throat> I was basically without a Jeep for over a week and a lot of my gear was still in my truck that I was also um, away from. So that made it very challenging like I wanted, maybe not, a, maybe a little bit too challenging in some aspects, but got the tent set up, got my line, a little bit of traps out, and so at least I had some fun with that while I was up there for a bit. 
can hear my chickens uh, in the background looking for a little bit of attention. Hopefully uh, they behave themselves. Uh, at any rate, so uh, camp life. Um, in the morning, I typically uh, wake up. I put some coffee on my on my stove, which is right here. This thing is uh, the best thing since uh, sliced bread. Um, very efficient stove. I pretty much went through over a course of uh, a week and a half, we'll say, um, probably a quarter quart of wood. And we had snow on the ground and it was pretty cold. Um, this thing is a very efficient stove and it has a, a little uh, um, shelf that comes off the side that I can keep all of my cast iron on. So in the morning, cook up my food, get dressed up. Um, I head out on my line. I usually make a sandwich or something for lunch. Head out on my line, make the loop, come back, um, clean up a little bit, prepare my traps for going back out again, and then I start putting up all my fur. Um, it's really uh, challenging because I'm without electricity to do all this in the dark. So I do try to save time before it gets dark to, uh, to do all my skinning, all my fleshing, and putting up all the critters. You know, I like to have it light so I can see what's going on. Um, I do have some candles and, uh, and a lantern, which, which helps. But uh, again, in the perfect world, having the light on is, uh, have doing it during the light time is, is really helpful. So one of the other goals for my trip was to try to use, uh, food-wise, use things I grew from my garden, garlic, onions, Brussels sprouts, potatoes, um, use some of the, uh, the venison I got from a recent deer that I had shot and um, use the animals that I caught. So I really enjoy uh, gourmet cooking. I enjoy cooking in my skillet. I enjoy cooking over an open fire. Um, some of the meals I had, um, I ate muskrat, which was delicious. I've had that before, but really good. They're vegetarians. The meat's awesome. Um, I had some beaver back straps. I had a bunch of different venison meals. Um, I have chickens. Uh, you heard them in the background earlier. So I brought up some of their eggs. My wife raises bees, so I was able to use the honey in my tea. And um, I have maple syrup out back. So I had some of that with my French toast and, uh, and pancakes. So very rewarding, again, to be able to grow my own vegetables and apples and fruits, what have you, harvest my own meats, and to be able to cook it up and basically thrive on the food that I that I um, that I picked and grew myself. So very rewarding and very tasteful. Got some nice mushrooms and some onions from the garden. And this was uh, some backstrap from a deer that I just harvested. So Brian and I are gonna have a little uh, late morning uh, feast here. Regarding uh, my trapping gear, um, like everything else I do, I try to simplify things. When I first started trapping, I was extremely simple. Then things got very complex, and I'm back to being very simple. Basically, I have my traps. I love these traps. There's an offset. The draws are really wide, so it's uh, you know not uncomfortable for the animal to be stuck in there. Um, I basically use two stakes. When I, when I get them in the ground, they're basically uh, crossed. That way, the biggest coyote I catch can't pull those out. Um, I bring my trapping shovel and my hammer to pound my stakes, and, and that's really all I bring. I have my gloves. I like to handle all of my traps with gloves, and then when I use my lure or my bait, um, I take those off, or I'll use, use a pair of rubber gloves or just nothing. But I want to make sure that the most important thing is I don't have any scent on my hands. Um, so the trapping I'm doing is both... The land critters and uh, and water critters like mink, muskrat, beaver, and otter. So I use two different types of traps, and really these are the only two types of traps I brought. Um, I'll set these conibears bears or body traps um, in front of holes in the banks or in little uh, swales where I can uh, narrow it down. The critters are swimming through. This is a great trap. And then um, for the uh, for my leg traps for all the other land animals. Mostly I'll set dirt hole sets for the coyotes and fox um, and the fisher. Uh, I'm very, very successful setting on trails blind sets. So basically no bait at all. It just goes right in the trail. The animal walks down the trail and he'll uh, kind of loop, tra um, you know, get him to step into the trap. Um, I enjoy making cubbies for bobcats. That's a lot of fun. My son and I over the past years will make these really big uh, cubbies. We can put bait in the back of the cubby put the trap in front and that works really well. So very simple sets, very simple equipment, 
And really, that's it. And just have a lot of fun uh, out there setting up different sets. So as I had mentioned, I was basically stuck at my camp for over a week because I had no vehicle. Um, I had to make the rounds on foot after I already set them with the truck. So that was um, over well over a mile um, of me hiking through, checking traps. Um, I was very successful with the dozen and a half sets I had out. Um, I got this beautiful uh, blonde coyote in a blind set. Um, I've got some gray fox, which was, these are great, great, beautiful animals. Um, I ended up with a couple raccoon, bunch of, uh, bunch of muskrat. And I was very fortunate to get a, uh, to get an otter in my trap. But this one here I got, I just had a tag or sealed the other day. Um, beautiful animal. So when I, when I'm out there doing this work and putting these critters up, I do like to spend the time to keep the skulls, to, uh, to skin out the paws. It's really not necessary for the fur market, but a lot of these I'll end up tanning myself or sent out to be tanned, and I like to keep them. And it's in, uh, going the extra effort doing that with all of these, um, to me, really, really pays off, and it, it gives you know, it, um, res a lot of respect for the animal. So at my camp that I set up, I set up an auxiliary uh, shelter tarp um, that I would do all of my skinning. I had a nice big rope out of a tree. Um, again, I want to do this during the daylight. I skin out the animals. I have a flushing beam that I use to uh, to get all the fats off of the off the animal, and then once that that's done, I put them on boards. And like I had mentioned, a lot of my gear unfortunately was stuck in my truck, and I just couldn't get get to it, including pins that I use. So I actually had to go out um, find um, uh, honey locust thorns to use to put this up just to get it stretched out properly. So that was a little bit of a challenge and improvising, but. Again, looking at all the critters I caught, I didn't catch a lot, but I caught a very nice variety. Um, I'm very pleased with the way everything uh, was put up. Um, I like the way I have my, my auxiliary uh, tarp set up. It's just far enough away from camp, so if I do attract any animals, they'll be there and away from, uh, away from where I am with all of my, my animals and processing. So uh, a couple of the times that I was able to catch up pretty good at camp, get all of my fur put up and skinned out properly, uh, left me with a couple hours to do a little bit of hunting. Um, again, I brought all of my uh, my primitive gear, mid-1700 uh, um, wool that I wore out into the woods, snowshoes for when it snowed, um, and I went out with my flintlock. Um, it was beautiful. I had an opportunity to go out before we got all the snow um, and after. Basically, on my trap line, I see deer multiple times as I hike around. Um, they must smell something, the gun or what have you. I didn't see any deer while I was out with the gun, but... Again, it just, it's just so peaceful being out there on the ground underneath a big uh, hemlock tree or cedar tree um, with my, my gear, just imagining I was uh, back in the mid-1700s waiting for a deer to come by. But no deer, and I guess in hindsight, with all this difficulty I had at camp, it probably was good I didn't have to deal with the deer camp, but maybe next year. So I, I got the call from the mechanic shop that my truck was finally done. This was at the very end of the day, probably about 4.30. Um, I was able to take care of paying over the over the phone, but uh, I was uh, kind of left with a big choice. We were expecting to get about four to six feet of snow here where I live in Buffalo, um, and we probably got about a six inches to a foot up at my camp. So I made the decision to um, to break camp a lot earlier than I wanted. I was hoping to be up there for a full three weeks. Um, I was only up there for maybe a week and a half, so kind of sad I had a break. But um, I did did break camp in the dark, which was extremely challenging. All of my gear was so wet and muddy. Um, I literally had to duct tape some of it to my Jeep uh, to get it home. I had to leave some equipment up there that I'll, I'll go back up to get. Uh, so I did um, get home. I had to go through a little bit of um, some nasty snow. Got home maybe at 2 in the morning. Um, and then really uh, the work started the next day. Uh, luckily we didn't get the snow coming in just yet at my house. So I had a time to uh, lay all of my, uh, my tents, all of my canvas out. Uh, wash what I could wash, hang it up to dry, and then once it did get dry, I had to fold it all up, sort through all my ropes, which I, I showed you earlier. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of work um, to not only prep, but it's a lot of work to clean up afterward. And that's really the most important point or most important thing to do because when I get done next year, I want to go out and set up my tent. There it is. It's all clean. No problems. I'm ready to go. So it's a lot of work, but... Um, effort well spent. So as I reflect back on the trip that I took, um, I, I do keep notes when I'm in camp. Um, 
you know, critters I catch, this and that, things that I, uh, I brought with me that were important, things that I brought with me that I really don't need. Um, I spent a lot of time really thinking about this trip. Um, actually, last year while I was up there, I was planning for this trip, and while I was up there this year, I was planning for the next year's trip. So, to be honest, I really don't know if I change a whole lot. Like I said in my, my last trip, um, I would like to try to be up there for a longer period of time, at least a solid three weeks. Um, uh, the gear that I brought was solid. I had no issues with anything that I brought up with me. I could probably bring a little bit less clothing, but you know, you bring less and you find out you need it. So certain things you need to be a little bit, uh, you know, overcautious on other things you can, you can improvise. But again, it planned out perfect. Um, it is challenging, like I said earlier, where you could have a beautiful sunny day and it could be 60 degrees. And then you could also have an ice storm, which I've dealt with, or, you know, six to 12 inches of snow. So you really have to be prepared for all of that, which makes it a challenge when you're, uh, when you're setting up a trip like this in November especially up north by the Adirondacks. Thank you, Dino. Thanks for sharing your adventure. That was I told you guys it was going to be a cool one. Uh, so until next time, everybody, uh, take care. Thanks for watching. And remember, keep on trucking.